What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new One Netbook T1 tablet. Now I've actually been really excited to get my hands on this, really because of the specs this thing's pack, and it's actually got a really nice CPU for a 13-inch tablet. It's using a 12-core, 16-thread Alder Lake i5. You can also opt for an i7 version, but the one we have for this video is the i5. It's the 1204P. This chip does have Intel Xe graphics built in with 80 execution units, and they've paired it up with 16 gigabytes of LP DDR5 running at 5200 megahertz. So as long as the cooling system in this tablet can handle the chip at a higher wattage, we should see some really great performance out of this tablet. This does support a stylus for drawing and a detachable keyboard. This magnetically attaches to the bottom of the tablet. We've got a trackpad and a keyboard here. It's not backlit, I was kind of wishing it was, but it does work out really well with this 13 inch display. The back is constructed of aluminum and it's got these odd looking hinges. Now initially I thought it was because I have an early prototype, but all of the images that I'm seeing online have this little hinge. It does work very well, but it looks a little odd. It's very industrial for being on a tablet like this. Taking a look at the I.O. over here on this side, we've got a full-size USB 3.2 port, USB Type-C, which is also 3.2, and a mini HDMI port, so we can get video out of this really easily over HDMI or USB Type-C. Moving over to the other side, we've got another full-size USB 3.2 port, a 3.5mm audio jack, and a micro SD card slot. Now this does have dual stereo speakers, they're 1 watt speakers, it actually gets pretty loud, has a little bit of bass due to the way this whole thing's designed. It's definitely a little thicker than something like a Galaxy Tab S8, but we are rocking a lot more power here with that 12-core Alder Lake Intel CPU. All right, so when it comes to the specs, I have the i5 version, but they also make an i7 version. This has the Intel Core i5-1240P, 12 cores, 16 threads, four performance cores up to 4.4 gigahertz, and eight efficiency cores up to 3.3. Built-in Intel Xe graphics with 80 execution units, 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5 running at 5200 megahertz, a 1440p 13 inch IPS EDP display, Wi Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2. It's got a built in 12,000 milliamp hour battery with 65 watt fast charging capabilities, and they're claiming up to nine hours of use. And it is possible to get nine hours out of this, but you're going to need to turn that brightness way down and go to low power mode in order to get it out of this CPU. I've been averaging four to six hours out of this with the brightness set to around 80% and just in regular performance mode. And this comes out of the box with Windows 11. This model here happened to have 512 gigabytes of storage, but you can get this up to one terabyte. When it comes to using a stylus on this tablet, I'm not an artist whatsoever. I mean, I can draw a pretty mean stick figure every once in a while, but you know, if you needed to use this for handwriting, it does work out. But I really can't comment on this as a drawing tablet because I'm not an artist myself. But overall performance here is really snappy. We're running Windows and uh, you know, we've got the touch screen here, very responsive. Everything loads up super quickly. I mean, I kind of expected it would with this Alder Lake CPU. We've got Wi-Fi 6 here, so connecting wirelessly works out really well. And as you can see, I mean, it loads these web pages right up. Using this as an everyday tablet or kind of laptop replacement would work out really well. Web browsing, document editing, email checking, you want to do some photo editing and light video editing, it can definitely handle it. It's a very snappy little setup the way it is right now, but they are kind of holding this CPU back because it's only at 20 watts out of the box. We do have a boost up to 25, but unfortunately these really strive in the 30 watt range. And for everyday normal use, you don't need that kind of wattage. But when it comes to 3D gaming and heavier duty applications, having that extra power would definitely help out. But they have this limited for a reason, and it comes down to the cooling system. If I was to take this up to 28 watts, it would thermal throttle pretty quickly. But the way they have it set up out of the box, it does a great job. I haven't hit thermal throttle while this is set up at 20 watts. I'm really wondering why they didn't choose the Alder Lake i3 1215U. It's a lower wattage CPU, it does have less cores, but it would perform really well at a 20 to 25 watt range in this. We could get higher clock speeds out of that at the same wattage because it doesn't have to power so many cores. Personally, I think that would have been an awesome option for this tablet. Now I want to test out a little bit of video playback, and I know that these chips can handle 4K, but since we're working with a 1440p screen, I figured we'd just go ahead and test it at 1440p. Here's Big Buck Bunny, 60 FPS, 1440p, Stats for Nerds up on screen right now, and by the end of this, I didn't have any drop frames whatsoever at 1440p 60fps. 
And coming out of HDMI or USB Type-C to a 4K display, this chip will also handle 4K video playback with no issues. The next thing I wanted to take a look at were a couple benchmarks I ran on this unit. And the first one here is Geekbench 5, looking really good on the single and multi given that this is only running at a maximum of around 24 watts when it's boosted up. Single core, 1612, multi, 7795, not bad at all. Next thing I ran was 3D Mark, here's Night Raid with a total score of 13,318. We could get much higher scores here if we could up the TDP on this safely, but unfortunately 24 watts with that max boost here is it. But that's not going to stop me from testing out some PC games and some emulators, so let's go ahead and move over there now. And first up, we've got Forza Horizon 5. I know for a fact that this chip paired up with this iGPU can run this game over 60 FPS at the correct wattage. The sweet spot for this little chip is around 35 watts, it can go a bit higher. But with this tablet, we're kind of limited to 20 watts up to around 24. And it's really holding the gaming performance back, but you know, even if we were able to go up to around 28 watts with this chip, we don't have a cooling system that can really handle that kind of wattage. Here's Injustice 2, 720p low, and yeah, this will definitely run at 60. This is one of those games that actually works really well on lower end chips. We don't need to pull as much from this setup here to run this game at 720p low, 60 FPS, so it does work well, and there will be other games that run perfectly fine on this setup the way it is. And the final PC game I wanted to test here before we move over to some emulation was God of War at 720p low. I only got an average of 29 FPS, and it's that wattage that's really holding us back. If you take a look at Afterburner, you'll see it go close to 23 watts, but keep in mind it needs to share that 23 watts between the iGPU and the CPU. But now it's time to take a look at some emulation, and this really does a great job, even just at 20 watts. We've got PS2 using PCSX2, 1080p, DirectX 11, Gran Turismo 4 running at full speed. Getting some great performance out of this, and I'll say it again, I've had really good luck with Alder Lake chips and emulation, even the lower end i3s. We, using the Dolphin emulator, 1080p, DirectX 11, again, super smooth 60fps, looking really good here. And the last one I tested was PS3, and with some of the harder ones, we do need more wattage, so it's really not going to cut it at 60, but there's still games that are going to be playable with the RPCS3 emulator at 20 watts. Here we have Tekken 6, 60 FPS, Vulcan back in, so this chip does work great for emulation at 20 watts, and you know, anything underneath this is going to work out just fine. You want to do some Dreamcast, some Naomi, some N64, some PSP, you'll be good to go with this Alder Lake i5 CPU. So in the end, I do like the design of the tablet. This chip here does have a lot more to offer at a higher wattage, but unfortunately the way it's set up right now with the cooling system and the way they have the TDP set up, it's just not going to reach its maximum potential in this tablet. It does have a lot more to offer at a higher wattage, and like I mentioned, 35 watts is kind of the sweet spot for this thing, and it does perform a lot better with PC gaming at those higher wattages. But this was never meant to be a gaming tablet, and the way it is right now, it does work out well for everyday normal desktop and laptop use. I think the screen looks absolutely beautiful, 1440p IPS, but we do have that odd 3x2 aspect ratio, which, uh, you know, some stuff just doesn't scale up correctly on this screen. You'll have some bars on the side or the top and bottom depending on what you're doing. But web pages, documents, and most Microsoft apps will scale properly on this screen. It really comes down to, you know, trying to game. And again, it's just not a gaming tablet. I mean, it's really up to you. If you're interested in something like this, I will leave a link to their website and the Indiegogo page. It's up right now, there's two models. We took a look at the i5 model. They also have an i7 model, which will offer a bit more performance if the cooling system is a bit different. But you know, if that CPU is running at 20 watts, just like the i5 version, you're gonna get very similar performance out of both of these chips. If you have any questions or if there's anything else you wanna see running on this tablet, let me know in the comments below. It'd also be pretty cool if you could hit that subscribe button and maybe turn notifications on so you know when I post the next one. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.